Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. Today we have a slightly different video to normal. I'm going to be taking you back a little bit into the past and be telling you about my ground school experience as a student pilot. Now I did my training in the UK and obviously this will vary from country to country but I'm going to be telling you about my experiences. As well as this, depending on where you do your training, it might very slightly differ. However, I'm going to be telling you about my experiences. Now, if you sat the 2016 syllabus, you would be doing 14 subjects. However, if you do the 2020 syllabus, you'll be doing 13. There's only a small difference. Uh, rather than dropping a subject, they've just combined two of the ones I did into one subject. However, it's not different at all. So I did my subjects in two modules, seven subjects in three months, and then another seven in the next three months. Now, this will vary slightly differently depending on where you go to do your training. However, all the subjects are still the same. So for me, my 14 subjects were principles of flight, meteorology, aircraft general knowledge, instruments, human performance, and then VFR and IFR communication. However, they have now combined VFR and IFR communication into just one communications. So if you do the newer syllabus, that's what you'll be sitting. For my second set of subjects, I did performance, radio navigation, general navigation, flight planning, operations, air law, and mass and balance. So now we're gonna break it down slightly further and go into each subject one by one. Now, obviously I can't cover every subject in detail, but I will be going just covering the surface of each subject. So let's get into it. So to start us off, let's talk about principles of flight. What many can even say is one of the hardest subjects you will be sitting. So the principles of flight is as it says, the principles of how we fly. It basically talks about the aerodynamics effects of air over aerofoils, i.e. wings. We also looks at how lift, drag, weight and thrust work against and with each other to help us fly. This not only talks about subsonic flight, so slower than the speed of sound, but also about high speed flight, which is faster than the speed of sound, and how air acts slightly differently when you go faster than the speed of sound. We also cover stuff like stability and contra versus controllability. So if you make an aircraft too stable, you might not be able to control it. However, if you make an aircraft too able to control, it might not be stable enough to fly. Now for the second subject, meteorology. Now meteorology is all to do with stuff like the weather. It talks about the atmosphere, such as the troposphere, as well as the stratosphere, which is above that, and even the mesosphere, which is above that. We learn about these things called isoconditions, and these are the co assumed conditions at sea level. For example, we assume that at sea level, the Earth is 15 degrees C, and the pressure is 1013.25 hectopascal. We also learn about what happens when it's not quite that, as as you know, in different parts of the world, at sea level, it will not be exactly 15 degrees. So how is our performance of the aircraft affected when our ISA conditions are not met? We learn about the clouds and the different types and how to identify the dangerous ones. Also, why those sort of clouds are developed and how they are developed. We also learn about the dangerous effects of them, such as icing, the different types of icing. What happens if we fly into those clouds and encounter icing? what to look out for, what icing is more severe than others, and the dangerous effects of it, and why we should avoid those certain clouds. Another big topic of meteorology is wind. Wind has a huge effect on flying. Obviously, we can get to our destination so much quicker with the tailwind. However, it's a lot slower, and we'll need to burn a lot more fuel if you're in a headwind. So we learn about the different types of winds in different places of the Earth. As well as myself training in the UK, we go into a bit more detail about flying in the UK. And I assume depending on where you do your training, i.e. if you did it in America, you'd learn a bit more about the winds in America. And in meteorology, you'll learn about the METAR. This is essentially a code for pilots on the weather at a certain airport. And you'll learn about different charts and maps to help you read the weather all around the world, such as winds, clouds, icing, and other conditions in different areas. Next up, aircraft general knowledge. Now this can be split into three parts. We have systems, engines, and electrics. Now systems talks about the different systems in the aircraft itself. For example, the limits and loads of the aircraft, the structural stress it can encounter. Also the gears and the hydraulics, the electrics, and on the different controls. For example, from what many of you may know, an Airbus uses the fly-by-wire technology, where Boeing will use more mechanical system. As well as the gear, you'll learn about stuff like the brakes and how they are used to stop skidding in wet conditions to stop in the optimum distance. For engines, this can be split up into two parts. You've got propellers and jets. Not only will you learn about all the different parts of both engines, but you will also learn the aerodynamic effects and how they produce thrust to propel the aircraft forward. You will also learn about how what you do as a pilot affects the engine. For example, if you turn the mixture to make it more rich, what does that do inside the engine? 
and finally electrics. This is talking about what many of you may have already known if you studied physics, talking about different equations like the power, current, resistance, voltage equations. Electrics will go into detail about why electricity does what it does, both in a circuit and also stuff like static electricity. But it will also go into detail about the electric systems on the aircraft, such as the batteries, the AC versus DC systems and stuff like that. Next up, instruments. Now this can be split into both basic and advanced instruments. Basic instruments will go into your standard six pack of instruments. Not only how to use them, but also how they work. It also tells you what happens if they don't work. For example, if you've got icing on your pitot tube, your airspeed indicator would read slightly wrong. How would it read wrong? It will also go into detail about magnetism in the compass and how it works in different parts of the world. For advanced instruments, this goes into detail about what we use in current systems for passenger planes, such as Airbuses and Boeings. It will go into systems like the autopilot, the auto land system as well, as well as all the computers on there and how they all work. Next up, human performance. This talks about the body's natural state, but also the hazards of aviation and what we could encounter as pilots. Things like hypoxia, cosmic radiation, and alcohol. We will also go into detail about things like sleep and fatigue and how we can affect our performance as pilots. We will talk about perceptual errors, such as flying in IMC conditions or flying at night, as well as leadership and following others, as well as leadership and teamwork and how to create a balanced cockpit. Next up we have VFR and IFR communications. VFR standing for visual flight rules and IFR standing for instrument flight rules. This talks about the comms on the radio. You may have heard from other videos all that mumble that pilots talk on the radios. Well in comms we will learn about what to say on the radios and how to speak properly and when to use what pilot code and abbreviations. Aircraft performance is very closely linked to principles of flight. It takes those concepts that we learn in principles of flight and puts them into different conditions and how our aircraft performs in certain situations, such as in winds or in different temperatures. It talks about things like engine failures and if we were to encounter an engine failure on a runway, would we have enough runway to stop in the given temperatures or in the given winds? Or would we be even able to take off with one engine should one fail? Now radio navigation is, as it says, navigation using our radios. For example, systems like an NDB, a VOR, or an ILS. Now for people who don't fly already, you'll probably have no idea what that means, and that's completely fine. As you learn to become a pilot, you have to have no knowledge of any of these systems, and you'll go into great depth in all of them as you study RNAV. We'll also go into systems such as radar and learn about weather radar and how we can use that radar technology to pick up different types of weather, as well as the use of satellites more modernly for GPS and GPS navigation. Now, flight planning, I would like for you to meet a Jepson. So what is a Jepson? It's essentially a large book full of maps and other plates and charts. For example, approach plates, such as this one into London Heathrow, as well as very, very large maps, which we'll be using as pilots when we fly. And in flight planning, we will learn how to read these and use them. As well as the maps and charts that can be found in the Jepson, which we use to plan flights, we will also talk about pre-flight planning and fuel planning as well. For general navigation, we again use some of the maps and charts in the Jepson. We use these maps and charts to help us navigate around the world, looking at things like longitude and latitude in different hemispheres, and how the maps can vary slightly depending on where we are in the world. We also learn how to plot our routes on maps, and also how our speed and wind can affect what heading we fly. For example, if we are flying completely north, however we have a crosswind, we can't keep flying north as we'll be drifted to the side. So we have to point our nose slightly into the wind and as we continue to fly this way and the wind pushes us back, we continue to fly north. And on the topic of GNAV, I have a cool question for you. If I'm in the northern hemisphere and I fly 100 miles north, 100 miles east, 100 miles south and then 100 miles west, where will I end up? Will I end up in the same spot or will I be slightly off? Now, just a little hint for the question, I'm just going to remind you the Earth is round. Now, if the Earth was flat, we would end up in the same spot. However, I'm sorry to all you flat Earthers, but that is not the case. So leave in the comments below your answer on where you think we would end up. Next up, operations. Now, operations is the everyday procedures that we will follow as pilots. For example, carrying dangerous goods or noise abatement procedures, or even flying across the Atlantic. We will look at all of the different types of operations in different scenarios and the procedures that we must follow as pilots. Air law is as it says, is the laws of the air. 
Now, believe it or not, it's not just a free-for-all up there. However, at the same time, it's not like on the ground where each different country has their own rules. For example, if I was flying in England, but then flew across to France, would I fly a different way? Because, for example, they drive on the right in France, but we drive on the left in England. However, that would just cause create chaos if that was the case. So ICAO set out all the rules and laws for all the member states and countries can vary these rules. However, they can only make them stricter. All countries must follow these laws and when entering countries with stricter laws must follow their stricter laws as well. And last but not least, mass and balance. This talks about concepts such as C of G and loading of the aircraft. So the aircraft isn't heavy towards the tail or to the nose, for example. We will also talk about concepts such as tankering, where you take more fuel to one country, enough to get back as well, as for example, fuel may be cheaper in the country you started in. So then you don't have to refuel at the destination. But that covers all 14 of our subjects. Now, ground school is definitely a tough time. However, in my opinion, it is 1000% worth it. It's a tough six months where you have to focus, work hard, and put your 100% into it. However, the results of flying are definitely worth it. If you do have any questions about today's video, please leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to answer them. And also try to answer that GNAV question. It is a bit of a thinker, but I'm sure you can all get it. And just before I sign off today's video, I just want to give a huge shout out to a guy called Jack. Now Jack watches all my videos and he's been so supportive of me since the very beginning. He's always encouraging me and telling me how much of an inspiration I am. and I can't even begin to tell you how much it means to me. And a few days ago, he sent me these aviation theme stickers, which I just think are so cool. So I promised him I would shout them out for all the support he's given me. And I'm going to leave a link in the description to his Instagram if you want to get some for yourself. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video and you found it informative, please remember to leave a like. And remember to subscribe for more aviation themed content. But guys, I will see you in the next video. Oh, 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 oh,